for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. You may be seated. Um, we have a we have a guest this evening, um, Blaine Hartzler. And uh, did you un can you unmute him, Scott? There you are. Hello, Blaine. Uh, and I just thank you for a minute of your time, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to uh, just touch base and let everybody know that we were so thankful uh, for the hospitality and. Um, the, the team at the school there that helped us with the cooler situation, um, with the large crowd and all the things that took place. Uh, the team there did wonderful. Uh, I can't say enough. I can't be thankful enough uh, for all the things that they did for us there um, on, on behalf of the funeral home as well for the community. Um, Jana and Doug, and Scott, Oscar, I don't leave anybody out, but uh, everyone was wonderful. The, camaraderie of the team as well as the unity of, of everyone that was involved was amazing and we just appreciate it so much and so I just wanted to reach out and make sure everyone was aware of that that, um, that it, it, it meant a lot to us and I know it meant a lot to them and um, the family involved and everyone so thank you very much so. thank you Blaine. thank you Blaine for reaching out you don't have to stay for the whole meeting unless you really want to <laughs> Okay, moving on. Um, item uh, D, Mrs. Vance, would you like to? So Jason and I would like to recognize Michelle Jager um, this evening. So Jason, if you want to begin and then I'll take yeah, a turn. Absolutely. We, I, I got with Mrs. Vance um, a little bit uh, earlier in the year because Every we every month we come in here and we have the donations and things like that and you know typically um, the donations are usually from outside sources uh, or outside of our um, the corporation uh, but as I got to thinking about it I'm like you know Mrs. Um, Jager and her PTO she's our PTO president um, at Columbia and has been for years and um, they do so much for our school and for our kids and for our teachers that um, I really felt like you know we needed to kind of recognize what they've done for us. So I asked Mrs. Vance about, um, actually I asked, I asked Mrs. Jager to get with me and let's go back through everything that happened this year. And um, I can just tell you that um, not only does the PTO provide supplies for our teachers, supplies for our students, um, they, they help us during uh, Teacher Appreciation Week with meals. If they do meals throughout the year. Um, they also help pay for um, mini grants. So if there's a teacher that wants to do a special project inside their classroom, they can do mini grants. Um, they bring in animals so that we can do petting zoos for our kids during our, um, our uh, what's the week that we call it, field week or field days and things like that. They bring in all kinds of supplies and things. And, um, and, and they're just, it's just a constant thing. It's, it's every time that a need pops up, um, you know, she she comes down to my office about once a month or uh, so and just says, "Hey, I heard that you know we might need this. PTO will pay for half. You know that that grill that the whole corporation uses whenever we have our, our grill outs. PTO pay for half. And you know it's just that kind of relationship that they have with our school. Um, and it's not just the monetary and the donations and stuff that we get. Um, it's the building relationships with the parents." doing the fundraisers and really taking good care of the kids so I could talk a lot longer about what Michelle does what she's done for our school but quite simply it's um, we're very blessed to have her and we're very thankful for everything that she does and I wanted that to be recognized um, tonight so to build on that I asked the team Doug and his team do a great job with taking care of so much of the district there are always those things that um, need to be done in regards to touch-ups in classrooms and painting or deep cleans into different areas and 
Jason said I had just the perfect person to lead the crews for you and Michelle was our summer crew leader and I think um, what Blaine says or Blaine just said really um, puts into perspective what she has done because many of the people behind the scenes that that helped with the services were part of Michelle's team and you could just feel that leadership and that togetherness and willingness to help and always looking for something to do and I think the principals will tell you the buildings look great going into the school year this year and in part that is your leadership that has helped get us there so thank you so much for taking on that task and leading those crews and getting that work done it means a lot um, to everybody we're not done <laughs> every day the girls are asking me what's next so I appreciate everything you do in our building and, uh, and, and our staff does too and I just want you to know that everybody else does. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome to stay, but I, you know, I got children at home. <laughs> <laughs> dinner, so. I got Charlie at home. That's very simple. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you, guys. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, Before we on. go, I got a recognized husband too rolling out of here. I know he can yeah, still he, hear me. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't do without him. He he helps out too, and he comes and he brings things, he carries things in for us, he works at the events, and uh, it's really a team effort. So we appreciate him. Make sure he hears that. I was wasting. Sorry, <laughs> he, he was hiding from me back there. Sure I saw. Moving on, item E. Uh, Consent items, approval of the minutes from the June 19th, 2023 regular board meeting. I had a couple clarifications that I think are, would be helpful. I know it was a, perhaps a little confusing um, when Mark McCall came, because it was listed on the agenda about a Rochester Main Street tip, but that's not really what he was talking about. But, because we asked about expanding the tip and they're not, he was just coming and doing a report from the Redevelopment Commission. So I would recommend striking that he discuss the Rochester Main Street TIF. And then I would also recommend um, clarifying that the commission is um, helping to extend the Nickel Plate Trail instead of saying has purchased because the Redevelopment Commission themselves has purchased the Nickel Plate Trail there has been some land purchased, and that might be where that was con confusing because there was some land purchased that facilitates moving that nickel plate trail into the city, but it is separate. So I don't know, it's kind of um, confusing. So just wanted that to be clear. Anything else from the board? Anything else from those present? I will entertain a motion that we approve the minutes as amended. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Second. Thank you, Mark. All those in favor? Motion carries four to zero. <laughs> Next, we have the financial report. Um, uh, the first item is uh, adopt a resolution to transfer federal funds, audit costs to operations funds. And we discussed this at the study session. This is a, it's a sizable bill. <laughs> sure, well, sure. <coughs> How long is it? Okay. <laughs> About 21 seconds. Okay. Um, <laughs> resolution to transfer audit costs from federal programs to the operations fund, whereas the Board of School Trustees is the governing body of the Rochester Community School Corporation. Fulton County, Indiana, and whereas the State Board of Accounts conducts biennial audits of our federal programs and deducts the cost of these audits from our property tax disbursement, and whereas audit costs are considered an allowable expense for the respective programs. Therefore, be it resolved that the Rochester Community School Board of Trustees authorizes the treasurer of the Rochester Community School Corporation to transfer the following amounts to the operations fund, $10,695 from the school lunch account, $18,437 from uh, fiscal year 2023 Title I, and $11,808 from fiscal year 2022 Part B Special Education Grant. Any questions? Anything from the, the group? 
All right, I would entertain a motion that we approve this transfer as read. So moved. Or the resolution as read, sorry. Mark? So moved. Second. And Jenny? You're going to have to chime in, Stephen, because, you know, there's only four. Okay. Just wait my turn. Okay. <laughs> All right, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries four to zero. Approval of the funds reports as presented. And uh, Tom has always gives us good information. And um, all right, you want to share, Tom? Tom? Sure. I'm just <clears throat> waiting for you to be ready. Okay. Um, education fund in June, we had receipts of nine hundred eighty-nine thousand nine hundred sixty-four dollars and thirty-three cents. We had expenses of $1,362,707.34. Cash balance at the end of June in the education fund is $939,781.11. And just as a little side note, June was a three-pay month for the corporation. Uh, debt service fund, we had receipts of $2,056,722.61. We had expenses of $1,794,541.07. Cash balance at the end of June in the debt service fund is $1,160,948.85. In the operations fund, we had receipts of $1,829,995.83. We had expenses of $318,288.03. And our cash balance at the end of June in the operations fund is one million one hundred seventy-nine thousand four hundred seventeen dollars and fifty-five cents. Okay. Any questions from the board? Anybody else? If you, uh, I, did, I would accept a motion at this time. So moved. <laughs> Second. Okay, Stephen. Got it. Um, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries, four to zero. Oh, my favorite part, the readings. <laughs> All right, I was hoping Casey was gonna be here, I was gonna pass those on. We've got, we've got claims, baby. Yeah. yeah, oh, I beg your pardon, claims. We have, uh, cl you're right, I just buzzed past it. Claims uh, totaling. Three million two hundred five thousand eight hundred forty dollars and forty two cents, and the payroll for June sixteenth, uh, twenty twenty three, and July fourteenth, twenty twenty three, is one million two hundred twelve thousand two hundred seventy seven dollars and twenty eight cents. Any concerns? It's not really, good, but a questions. This is it looked a little different. So is this the new reporting thing? Reporting. It doesn't look like dot matrix from 1991. Yeah. Is, and there may not be a way for this, but in the old reporting, there was a way to show which fund. That should have been the final page included with the claim. So that was helpful because it did, it had the total. They were. But with each, and I could have missed it, but it looked like with each claim, like it had a description of what it was, <coughs> but I, unless I missed it, which is possible, didn't see what fund it was coming from, or maybe <clears throat> there's a code that I didn't know. The totals at the end are helpful always uh, as well. I was just curious about that, because that's kind of- The line by line item? Yes. Okay. In the old reporting, it would, you could then just see if it was what operations or title five or whatever from those. Does the new system have that capability? Do you know? I will have to inquire. Okay. I don't. It's not a deal breaker. I was just curious because sometimes that's helpful when looking overall. But definitely the totals to be under are important. Thank you, Amber. That was just my question. Okay. Any other questions from the community? All right. At this time, I will accept a motion that we approve claims and payroll as presented. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Second. Thank you. <laughs> All those in favor? Motion carries four to zero. Next, we move on to the um, first reading of policies. We have bylaw 0141, 
bylaw 0142, bylaw 0142.1, bylaw 0142.2, bylaw 0142.3, bylaw 0144.10, bylaw 0144.2, bylaw 0152 uh, policies 1213.01 policy 1425 policy 1615 policy 2410 policy 2461 policy 2462 policy 3124 policy 3213.01 policy 3215 if you yell bingo I'm gonna smack my <laughs> policy 3231 policy 3362.01 policy 3425 policy 4213.01 Policy 4215, policy 5512, policy 5517, policy 5517.01, policy 5771, policy 6250, policy 6700, policy 7430, <coughs> policy 7540.02, Policy 8310, policy 8451. And again, this is the first reading, and we do go over these in detail um, <coughs> at our study sessions, so everyone's aware of what's going on here. And this is really some excellent reading. If you guys want to pull these up and board docs and uh, enjoy yourselves, there you go. So that's first reading. We do not need to move on that item. Letter H, action items. This is the third reading of policies by law 3431, 5771, 5772, 6110, 6212, 6230, 6620, 6621, 6655, 6800, 7440, 8500, 9150, 91. Six zero, and this one we will need to vote on and uh, we have uh, had these in front of us for three months so uh, if there are any questions from the board did you say policy three one four seven yeah I think that should be three one four one what did I miss well, it's different in the mm -hmm. actions, but yeah. the actual policy is 3141. 3141. Okay, we'll make that correction. <coughs> Anything else? Sorry. And just as clarification, the policy is the correct one, 3141. That's suspension of teachers without pay. Um, thank you, Mark, for catching that. So the policy listed under the details, the one that's actually posted where you could read the whole policy, that is correct. It's just in the note that it was okay. All right. Thank you so much. Any other? I do want to say one thing, and I want to bring it up to make sure everyone knows, and since this is being recorded by ROTC, in our bylaw, 0167.3 at the very beginning, says the school board recognizes the value of public comment on educational issues and the importance of allowing members of the public to express themselves on school corporation matters. 
I just want to make sure the public knows that we are here to listen, not we're just going to do what we want. Right, and they are welcome, more than welcome. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Stephen. Yep. Any others? At this time, I'll entertain a motion that we uh, approve these um, bylaws and policies. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Second. And Mark. All those in favor? Motion carries four to zero. Approval of the handbooks for Columbia Daycare, Little Zebras Preschool, Smart Start Preschool, Columbia, Little, RMS, RHS, and Athletic Department. We have had these available to us. Go ahead, Jen. So I don't know, Cassie mentioned just as um, we were coming into the room that uh, there would be a couple of updates in the middle handbook so that it aligns properly with the athletic handbook. So if you want the principals and directors to go through those changes, you can. I know we've talked about them at the study sessions and everything, knowing that Cassie needs to align hers with the athletic handbook. That would be the correct one that we would be going with um, if it's approved. But um, since we've covered those before, if you want to move forward, if you want the principals to kind of highlight some of those changes, we can do it either way. But please know that Cassie recognizes the alignment with the athletic handbook. Anybody else? Oscar, do you need to make any adjustments? Our high school one hasn't changed since we met at the study session. Okay. Of course, it hasn't either, the three that we've got, except that we did update Riddles and Columbia's to um, the 20th century fonts and the uh, outlines <laughs> because it was in like a teletype. Like, I don't know what it, I don't even know what font it was, but it was probably one of the most earliest fonts ever made and it looks really nice now. But no changes to any of the stuff that we've already briefed you on. In the athletic handbook, I don't know if there's any questions. I know we made several changes in there. Uh, we met with Cassie and Lucas and um, A.D. Rini and Lori and I. I think that was all that was there, right? To make it way out from the boss. She led the media, I guess. So, I don't know if there's questions about that. I'll do my best to answer. Well, did I read it correctly that, that if we're striking the part about a $20 participation fee, that that means there's no fee? Accurate. Yep. <clears throat> one little note, and it's just because I'll have a little semi preschool, so I wrote that one very carefully. That's the only one that listed the prices for before school and after school and for lunch. And so either I would either just take those out or correct them just because we just upped those. For the, for the little, Zebbies, little, Zebbies, is little Zebbies preschool. It, we, we put them in the riddle middle one, or oh, the middle it, Columbia one as well. Oh, okay. Um, we, did, we didn't break it down into if you only come Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we didn't go into all those scenarios. Mm -hmm. we, we did put the, the information where it has um, what the starting rates are for that, uh, for before and after school. So my understanding though is that we have, we um, increased those rates at our- We put the latest rates in it. I double check is it at more than ten dollars per week for before school now and more than twenty dollars per week for after school and then I think and then lunch prices went up if it's wrong I'll change it but uh, I, I, th I thought that it was the uh, most recent information like three or four days ago I put that in there okay. or one of my staff members did but. and you know maybe Jason we Maybe we didn't have the most yeah, it's recent no big version deal. too. I mean, but we'll we'll I'll make sure that the correct ones are in there. But it is it is in there. I'll just double check it, and make sure that's not a problem. Just to make sure that we have the oh, right, yeah, yeah, right ones on there. Yep, he's cake. And I guess so it's said in the public meeting for athletics, there's two changes that I think we really struggled with the last two years. Kevin and I both being new in our roles. One was community service to make up for suspended time. So we took that out because that's, I wouldn't say virtually impossible to monitor from the high school principal's perspective, but for me to justify that Mr. Kissler gets, only misses three games because he's gonna do 50 hours of community service, then the next kid I'm gonna say no to, that's a lot of gray area. 
So that's just more black and white. Second suspension is 50%. And then that takes that argument kind of out of there. And then uh, the attendance one, um, there were some weird rules in there about certain minutes from a class and things like that. We made it pretty cut and dry that if Misty Furrow marks you absent on our absence sheet, you are not eligible if you're marked absent for one class period throughout that day. Now, if you have a doctor's note and all that kind of stuff, that all plays into that. But those are the two kind of administrative changes that will make it more black and white for us instead of it looking like we're picking and choosing different situations. It just kind of clarifies that for parents and students. That's a good point. Thank you. Did you say that the little Zebby one was the one that was not correct, or the it wasn't the preschool? The the preschool, preschool. little Zebby, the little accurate. zebras preschool. Correct. The okay. version I have, I think. Correct. Is correct. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry. The Columbia Riddle one has the correct information in it. Okay. Uh, 14 or 28 dollars or whatever but yes you are I thought I'm sorry I thought you said it was in that one but not in the other one um, but I'll get the uh, little Zebby one correct thank you sorry about that I was confused it's okay. no I problem. trying to type notes on <laughs> notes of what's going on when I'm supposed to be a part of that okay anything else from the, from the board <coughs> any questions from those of you unattended. I do thank you principals all very much for the work that goes into these because I once had a former board member tell me nobody reads those anyway well yeah they have to because then <laughs> when when it comes to um, making decisions and it comes to hit the fan you all are the ones that have to enforce what you have in there so we this group has done a great job of continually updating those so that they reflect what's really going on. And I, as Mark said, I really appreciate the clarifications um, to take out gray areas because that's always a quagmire. So, all righty then. If there are no other questions, I'll accept a motion that we accept the handbooks as presented with the discussed amendments. So moved. Second. <laughs> Thank you. All those in favor? Motion carries 4-0. Approval of the exception to the Wednesday rule for open house at RMS Wednesday, August 16th, 2023. I'll see if you'd like to speak to yeah. I feel like I'm always asking for an exception to the Wednesday rule. But <laughs> Wednesday nights work very, very well to get whole family attendance at these events. And this is another one that we've done for years and we get lots, lots of attendance. We do taco bar and cookie and that helps as well. So um, this is a date that there's nothing else going on. So we really feel like, again, we'll have good attendance and that's what we're aiming for, so. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, does that include eighth grade? No, it's five through seven. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else from the board? All those in favor of approving the, or excuse me, Jesus. I would entertain a motion. motion. I'll move. Thank you, Mark. I'll second. And Jim. All those in favor, please. Oh, favor. now it's time. <laughs> All right. Motion carries four to zero. I thought you were making a third. <laughs> <laughs> Student oh. and stakeholder focus. I am having trouble. <coughs> focus, come on. It's not who, me or him. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Donations uh, for this month. Uh, Columbia Elementary from an unknown donor. The nurse's office supplies undergarments from the First Christian Church. Columbia Elementary, unknown toys for daycare from Samantha Wally. Oh, the amount is unknown, excuse me. RHS cheerleaders, $2,000. Purpose for your RHS cheerleader needs, and that is from the Optimist Club. Uh, donated to RCSC, $147.40. Needs of the corporation, and that's from Kroger Card Rewards. And you're welcome. I put a lot of money in that fund. <laughs> Are there any questions about the donations? And again, always, we're very grateful for 
the donations that make lots of little things and big things happen at our school that would be difficult to fund otherwise. So I would accept a motion at this time. So moved. Stephen? So. I'll second it. Okay. <laughs> So, I'm allowed. Okay. What you want to do? I'm not. I never do what I want to do. Okay. Uh, Next, we have a personnel report. Vote on that. Aye. Oh, yeah, we should vote on that other thing. Goodness. <laughs> Save. Aye. Okay, all those in favor, aye. So, <clears throat> I'm losing my mind. Okay. And personnel report. At Columbia Elementary, we have. Jordan Fresh, Instructional Assistant in Developmental Pre-K, hourly rate of $12.59. Donna Fincher, Instructional Assistant, first grade, hourly rate, $12 an hour. Kenzie Conrad, transfer from RHS to Little Zebbie Daycare, hourly rate, $13.14. Gabby Meager, Instructional Assistant in Developmental Pre-K, hourly rate, $13. Anna Seward, increase hourly rate from $16 to $18 per hour. Real Elementary, Sydney Scarberry, Special Needs Instructional Assistant, hourly rate of $12.59. Skyler Stevens, Special Needs Instructional Assistant, hourly rate $12.59. Amber Willard, Special Needs Instructional Assistant, hourly rate $12.59. Heather Schaefer, Pardon me. There's a sneeze coming and I know we're just going to show it. I'm sorry. Maybe not. Okay. <laughs> it can't be held. I'm sorry. Huh? <laughs> Aimed for advance, he said. <laughs> Heather Schaefer, transfer from special needs IA to Title I IA, and her pay remains the same. Corinne Hines, fourth grade teacher, annually $40,000. Don Howard, long-term sub, Mrs. Wilson, Maynard, Maynard, Maynard? I don't know. And uh, from uh, August 1st to August 30th. Daily pay, 160. Rochester Middle School, Michaela Bauer, instructional assistant, hourly rate, 1259. Laura Brady, transfer from Columbia Daycare to RMS Special Ed, <coughs> hourly rate $12.59. Rochester High School, Bobby J. Meager, ASC assistant position, hourly rate $15. Transportation Department, Catherine Pessing, special needs, bus aid, daily rate $80. Judy Johnson, special needs, bus aid, daily rate $80. Maintenance Department, Michael Loris, Building Technician, effective July 17th, 2023, hourly rate, $12. RHS Athletic re Recommendations, John Walkman, RMS Cross Country Assistant Coach, stipend $950. Hannah Moore, RMS Volleyball, it says RHS, but this is all RMS. That's my hair. It happens, it's mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> And more, RMS Volleyball, 6th grade, stipend $920. Alicia Hill, RMS Volleyball, 7th grade, stipend $1,620. Samantha Wally, RMS Volleyball, 8th grade, stipend $1,950. Reagan Newton, RMS Volleyball, Volunteer Coach, Volunteer. Resignations. Ashley Bartow, Columbia Elementary Special Needs IA, effective July 18, 2023. Isabel Duranlo, RMS, RHS Band Director, effective July 21st, 2023. Any questions or corrections? I try not to butcher the names. Okay. Um, at this time, I will accept a motion. I move that we accept the personnel report as presented. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? <coughs> Motion carries four to zero. Mrs. Vance. So we'll go through uh, principles first, if you'll share things that you've been working on, um, successes over the past month since the last board meeting, and things that you may need from myself or 
the board. Oscar, we'll start with you. Uh, so we got through band camp. Uh, we want to thank Mrs. Ronello for what she's done for the band program as she's taking a job with Plymouth. We have those interviews coming up tomorrow morning uh, to hopefully find her replacement. Um, but we did appreciate her sticking it out through band camp for the students. Um, we got the scoreboard up uh, out of the football field. I believe it's operational at this point in time. Uh, we're brainstorming ideas for the old scoreboard. And I think besides that, we got Mr. Lamer uh, in-house and getting him set up for the new year. And Mrs. Hoover met with uh, the other new teachers today as well. So I think we're about ready to roll at RHS for the upcoming next Wednesday. Um, the pool's coming right along. They're down to just a checklist of items, a few last, last little things that need to be done. It's looking really good if you haven't been in and want to come take a look. It's looking really good. Um, we are enrolling kids a lot right now, which is awesome, so that's fun. And we have two new staff members we're getting ready to roll as well. Um, we just started intercession today, and we are ready for big PBIS day one next Wednesday. Real to middle is Monday, yep. And then after that, that's over around 11.30, and then from noon to 4, we let 6th and 7th graders come and get their locks and iPad and schedule and set up their locker and all that, so Monday's a big day. Mm -hmm. yep, we've got intercession going on right now as well. We've got all our, our new teachers hired, so we're excited about that. Um, Mrs. Rohr is meeting with those new teachers tomorrow. And uh, we have our open house at Riddle for our new students. will be Monday from 5.30 to 7. Hey, before you go, yeah, we got MacBook <laughs> pickups Wednesday and Thursday. <laughs> An eighth grade open house from 5 to 6.30 on uh, Wednesday as well. Those are two big events coming up. Jason? We are in the process of still hiring for positions. We are not full in our daycare at this point, and we are working on our pre-K um, teaching positions, so we're continuing to work through that right now. Uh, we are in the middle of intercession at Riddle as well. Everything's going well on that end. We have gotten a daycare um, outside dedicated play area um, built, and uh, I say built, fenced in. Uh, we'll continue to uh, add to it as we uh, get money and donations and things to um, add stuff. But we, we needed a spot where we could uh, take our daycare kids out and let them play outside and, and not um, and, and be, be safe. So we've uh, we really appreciated that as well. We continue to work on our process for My Way Pre-K. Uh, we did receive our um, exempt license um, for a uh, Pre-K program in the state of Indiana, which is our first step. So that first hurdle has been um, crossed, and now we're getting ready to trip over the second and third ones as we uh, try to go over the next steps. I'm just joking about tripping. We'll be fine. It's just going to take time. There's a lot to it. I appreciate everybody's patience and support as we work through that. Um, in regards to maintenance. I think I did enough damage last meeting. But <laughs> 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 um, as far as staffing goes, we're doing pretty good on staffing. We're one short at Riddle. Um, I still need to get one more for middle school and I believe I need one more for the high school, and then we'll be fully staffed and functioning there. Um, other than that, I think we're doing pretty good for the most part, but uh, I wanna thank the board myself for all the support that you guys have given us, and uh, I know my guys appreciate it, and gals. Shout out to Doug who thought quickly on his feet when the pool people had some leftover materials that he could use elsewhere at the middle school and he thought quickly and got something done that otherwise wouldn't have been done. So I appreciate that. Great. Nothing on Wendy's plate right now. <laughs> <laughs> we are um, finishing up the uh, summer food program. We started this actually at the end of May at a couple locations. Thursday it will be in its completion. And then coming up 
uh, this Thursday, we are hosting a food show. Last count, I think we're at about 300, give or take, uh, directors, the food service assistant managers that are coming into the district to uh, meet vendors anywhere from food to technology to chemicals to equipment. Last count of that was about 47 different vendors that were coming in. This will count towards training hours and it'll give us a chance to mingle with other districts, get some ideas, test the food. Yeah, I heard your samples. Yes, it's at the high school. Yep. Yeah, He's in the know. <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, Scott and his crew. They sold out of MacBooks, I think, by the evening of Tuesday. Yep. Tuesday evening. Tuesday. Um, raising $43,500 for the district. Um, it was a great, uh, I think, community endeavor. It also gave some of our hourly employees some summertime hours of work and we most certainly came out ahead in, in that respect. Um, just want to share with the community, with the board, one of the most hectic things that happens that first uh, couple days of school is with transportation and bus routes. And we want the public to know that those buses are going to be running a little bit late for the first few days, but it's part of the process in regards to setting up safety protocols, drivers getting to know students' names, we want to make sure the students are safe, that they're on the right bus, that they're headed to the right home, that they understand um, expectations, all of those things that keep the students safe, the driver safe, and start to build those relationships. So we do ask for the community and especially parent support as we go in that. Those are the biggest hurdles um, that are seen uh, widespread. We have hurdles within the buildings and everything, but do appreciate everybody's patience in regards to bus routes and just please know that the reason behind that is, is trying to build those relationships. So. I just have a quick question for Jason. Yeah. Um, you said you, what are you said you're still looking for donations and needs for your preschool playground? Oh uh, yeah, not really. I mean, we're just it's it's kind of new, uh, and uh, it's not a real large area because we're trying to keep it kind of small and contained. But just yeah, um, anything that outdoor wise that um, that are little kids or little infant, not infants, but uh, yeah. <laughs> any, any, any real steep slides that we can, <laughs> no, um, we've, and I, like I, I got a basketball goal at a, at a garage sale that was, that was a good deal. And uh, actually it was, it was pretty funny because I didn't have any cash on me. And uh, one of the, one of my former students was there and she heard me talking to the lady. I told her I needed to go get money. And when I came back that, former student had overheard what we were doing and paid for it. Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, and if she's watching, which I doubt she is watching right now, but um, she knows who I am and I know that she bought that and it, it was very much appreciated. I don't think she would want to uh, share that. But no, we're doing, yeah, just we're looking for anything that we can do. Positive answer. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, that's all I have to know. That's all I have. Okay. At this time, um, we will adjourn our regular board meeting. If, uh, have a motion. Before we do that, just a reminder to the public, school starts next week, buses will be out, students will be driving. If kids walk to school, kids walk it's to a school. great point, bicycle, bicycle to school. Yep. And school starts on the 2nd, correct? Correct. Yep. Okay. We will have teachers out on the 1st, <laughs> keep your eyes out, Starbucks will be really crowded, so you know. Will there be any golf course? We don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's good for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'll be fine. All right. Uh, did I get a motion to so second? <laughs> sure, second. Okay. All those in favor? Thanks for stopping yes. by. You guys have a great few days before you. <laughs>